Epic has just taken it to the next level with Fortnite Creative 2.0. The footage you're seeing right now was made in their new editor, which lets players collaboratively make levels and worlds in the Fortnite universe, essentially the Roblox to Epic. You can try out all of the UEFN maps or Unreal Editor for Fortnite in Fortnite itself. And because of how popular Fortnite is, there's essentially what seems like an unlimited number of maps and experiences because of its dedicated player base. However, there's a couple of things that make Unreal's new editor very special, much different than the competition. What you're seeing on the screen is actually a Roblox game called Frontlines, which features a realistic FPS fully made in Roblox, which uses the Lua scripting language. So if someone's able to make that in Roblox, just imagine what someone can make in Fortnite's editor, which uses Unreal Engine 5 features such as Lumen and Nanite. Lumen is their newest global illumination system, which simulates how light interacts with the environment in the real world by introducing indirect lighting. Essentially, the light bounces off the surfaces, creating the natural shadows and reflections all in real time. And Nanite is their new way of optimizing meshes and polygon details so that you can essentially have millions or even billions of polygons within your level with no quality or frame rate loss. It also uses automatic LODs, which is level of details. So essentially it switches out what's further away for something less detailed, which you won't notice anyway, but drastically increases performance. And all of this is available right now in Fortnite and in the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Epic Games vows to share 40% of the Fortnite net revenue with their creators, which is higher than Roblox's cut. They take a 70% revenue cut. I've been a Unity developer for the last six years, but I'm really excited about this new technology and that it's being more available to the masses so that anyone can create their own worlds or levels. And so I'll be giving my first impressions for the Fortnite editor as a Unity developer. So let's get right to it. I did have some past Unreal Engine experience. I used to work on this little parkour prototype that I was making for fun, and I actually never finished it, but I really like how Unreal Engine worked with their scripting language. I thought it was very impressive, and it's definitely very different to what I'm used to in Unity. So when we open this up, we get a project browser, which has some samples. Samples are extremely important to help onboarding. And right here, they even have some extra samples, such as a parkour example, which let's click on that parkour one. One thing I noticed was that this took a large download size, this editor, which is a little different than Unity, which is a much smaller download size and engine. Oh, wow. They even have revision control. Basically, if something happens, I think this lets you rewind back in time just in case. All right. So that took a little bit of time to load. All right. So the graphics are super nice. Just starting off the bat, like, wow, like the shader is actually super cool. Let's try it out. First, what seems to me we need to open a session to start the game. I can't just press start the game here. You'll definitely need a beefy computer to play this. So it seems to play the game, you need to launch Fortnite, which is a uh, kind of annoying, but understandable. All right. So that took quite a while here to load up. It is kind of a process just to play the game the first time. I hope that once you just start playing, it auto saves it and you don't have to keep opening it up again. So essentially it's just a simple parkour map here to get started, which is nice. But here we have our scene view, which is essentially our map. Then if we select an object, we can see its details here. So you can change the location, the rotation, the texture data, the materials. It seems that some stuff is built in. So they have a verse file here, which is their new scripting language, but they made this language specifically for this editor, which is quite impressive. So I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this just right off the bat. It seems like a mix of Python with a weird syntax because we don't need any semicolons. So it seems simple enough. Doesn't seem as bad as Unreal's C++ for sure, but it is a little quirky. And for example, a kid getting into this might be very overwhelmed. And I got there by going to this verse explorer that was already opened. And then you can open up these folders and then just double click it and it opens up your default IDE. We can easily add more shapes here, such as this cube, and we can move it up in the scene just as usual. The content drawer, which I opened with control space, similar to Unreal Engine 5's way to open the content drawer. Basically here we can access all of our assets, similar to the project section in Unity. You can see assets here. We have the fog plane, we have the sky dome, and what they added in 2.0 was custom assets. So now people can import their own custom models, which I don't think was possible in 1.0. 
now if we go to sketchfab and let's search a fortnite skin and set it to downloadable there's actually a lot of skins wow all right let's choose this marshmallow skin here and we can download the 3d model and just choose fbx mode so if we go and import the fbx file import all of it and now we can access our new model i'm pretty sure i imported it wrong because it doesn't seem to have the textures correctly on it then we can click on it and open our model which is super dark in here it's similar to unreal where we have our material slots and our lod it doesn't seem that there's a super simple way to import the textures from this tutorial i'm looking at we have to go into each of the materials and then assign the textures manually which is a little annoying to be honest but then you can actually import animations from like mixamo and rig it but it does seem like there's a little bit of upfront work if you want more customized content which is a little annoying but you know it's the start we also have this fab option here so we can get content from their own unreal marketplace and you can even purchase these items so another way for them to make money <laughs> i'm not sure if people upload these assets or if it's their own assets but they look pretty good they even come with kits and they have the mega scans as well which is essentially they scan real world objects and make them available as models which unreal does that as well which is another awesome thing unreal does now let's open a new level and explore that one all right so i opened up a new level here and we're just going to try that out and just push the changes you can also change the landscape here from the selection we can change it to landscape mode we can actually alter the existing landscape so we see our layer is locked here so let's unlock it and now we can actually change it so that's really nice i was looking at the unreal documentation here which is ironic because the unreal 4 documentation worked for this fortnite editor and it seems like they have pretty good documentation on the fortnite side if we're just gonna explore that for a little bit you can see they have images which is important and getting to know the user interface here change the settings it still might be a little complicated for someone who's not really used to development so they'll probably have to like stick to tutorials and whatnot anyways back to the unreal editor now we can kind of change all this stuff which is pretty neat and we can control z to undo which is nice and you'll see that it kind of updates the trees in the scene editor which is nice but at the same time it does take a little bit of power on your computer it's pretty cool that we can just update this terrain as we please and you can change the brush size the brush fall off as well so we can like make this little hill and it even has uh like an automatic triplanar shader here if we can look at it you see that on the side it's a rock but on the top it's a dirt which is pretty cool and depending on where we put the brush it just keeps that top part and just makes the side of it rock we can also change the brush size which this one's a little wonky but this could be good for mountains and whatnot we can smoothen it out we can kind of flatten it oh wow let's make a ramp oh well, that's interesting all right so we set two points here and we can set the width of the ramp fall off this is interesting we can add a ramp wow and it literally just like cuts the map in half that's really impressive though how it automatically like does all this calculation for you so it has the rock it has the grass underneath that's really nice so i think this this is really impressive just the map editor itself and the fact that it looks so good like right off the bat we can change the settings here from lit to unlit so you see the effect that the lighting has on the scene. It looks like bad. And then we enable it and wow, it's a completely different thing here. Okay, here we can see the new lumen overview. So we can see the lumen scene, how the reflections look and the cache it was really cool. We can also view the nanite overview. You can see the triangles, the instances here, the primitives, some materials and some other stuff. You can even see the reflections and this is super trippy. So basically basically how light is reflected off of the environment and this is just really cool actually this would be cool if there's a game with this kind of stuff and this is without the colors but it still is detailed lighting and this actually looks like another kind of game so let's try adding just a free fab to our scene just to see how it looks and let's put free not just a mega scan let's put in a banana let's see here collision ready optimized for the vertex materials 
is three megabytes not bad all right so if we go to the content browser here it adds it as a reference context so if we look here at our banana it looks pretty good and now to select it i have no idea where to select probably because we're still in landscape mode so we have to go back to selection mode here all right and then we can then increase the scale we can increase it to four 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 on all axes just a random banana in the middle of the map also noticed we can have different settings here like lod settings actor settings physics settings rendering i like how it's divided up compartmentalized into its section so it's a little neater and let's just quickly explore this kind of modeling section here which is oh that's really neat we can model right inside of this we don't really have to go into blender i mean it'll probably be easier to do some stuff in blender than in here but at least they have this option so we can create the box and then we can select the model and then we can do stuff to the model we can edit the pivot we can kind of smooth it out we can adjust the values here and we have to click accept i think this clicking accept is a little annoying and i'm not exactly a professional on this modeling stuff yet but it seems like we can do a lot of stuff we can even do uvs wow we can even bake the textures and oh, that's pretty impressive we go to the animation tab we don't have any characters on the scene so it's a little unfortunate for this sample i'm just gonna look at a tutorial by logan it's also really easy to add in settings into your game they have that built in which is nice you don't have to like configure that yourself and it seems we we can add in like cinematic sequences as well by putting a camera in the scene and then kind of like rotating it around the scene and they even have sequence curves which let you kind of interpolate between different positions so it's smoothed out and not very harsh the movement all right if we see this one here from fortnite events we're in animation mode and we'll have a reference to all of the body bones and we can actually make animations within the editor which is really nice or edit the animations when we're in play mode so we're previewing the changes you can actually press tab and view the log so if we print anything it'll show up here if i go into the unreal documentation and look at the verse it seems like they do have some examples on the on begin print hello world print this print that and they do have some lessons which is nice explaining how input works with some little cat figure there and setting coins equal to this but it's not really very advanced and i'm sure if anyone would actually make any a game out of this documentation it would be kind of of difficult if someone's new to this because there's just a lot of stuff here but i think this is a really good start right now you can only make specific types of games they don't really let you like dive in deep 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 into customization like in roblox you can make a first person shooter right now it's more centered around fortnite like experiences which is fine for what they're trying to do but i think really what we're gonna see is epic pushing this out more and giving players more creative freedom on what kind of fortnite maps they'll make because it's really only a benefit to them essentially they get unlimited content and more activity in the engine but i think epic's doing a really nice job of building out fortnite and the ability to actually import custom models is a game changer so i think it's really cool there's some stuff that i'm not a fan of just unreal in general is like a bit clunky size wise it does like kind of freeze on my machine sometimes and then there's just a lot of buttons everywhere um um, it's kind of confusing and this isn't even that bad compared to unreal engine where it's just full of stuff but i think they did a great job and i'm excited to see how they push this forward i think i'll stick to unity for now though thank you for watching if you enjoyed feel free to subscribe and like the video leave a comment thank you to all my patrons for the support and i'll see you next time